My name is Samantha Gambling. I live in this tiny house. I'm in the middle of the forest and it's wonderful. deck that I built this summer and built a roof for it. I'm still trying to figure out uh, how <laughs> how to keep it dry um, because there's a lot of condensation because it's so wet here. So it's a work in progress, but I'm very proud of my building project because I do not build things. This is the house. Come on in. So this is actually my side door. I have um, two entrances. So the front door uh, is on that side, but this is a nice kind of entrance to the deck. Um, it's basically what you see is what you get. This is my kitchen area, uh, pantry, there's some storage for more food stuff down there. Um, I have a bar fridge, which is one of the hardest parts I think of living in a tiny house is not having storage for food because I cook a lot. So um, if I were to do it again, I would probably get a full sized or at least an apartment sized fridge. But I love my big sink and the three burner stove is perfect. It's an RV stove. And then I have a, a hood fan and yeah, all the fix-ins. My bathroom is at the back here. I have a urine diverting composting toilet. So it separates the urine and the solids. The urine then goes down a perforated pipe into the ground because it's basically just nitrogen. So good for the soil, um, so long as it's not contaminated and then the solids go up through a conveyor belt. The manual pump here sends solids up the conveyor belt into my lovingly named uh, poop box outside. And that has red wriggler worms in it. So it starts a decomposition process and then eventually I'll hot compost it and turn it into soil. I also have a shower, just a basic shower in here and sink and it does the trick. My living room area, uh, this is storage and this is storage, so the wheel wells are underneath here, but it gives enough storage for like hoses, electrical cords, um, little bits and pieces, my camping stuff. And my workspace back there, my closet, library. My loft is up at the top, that's where I sleep and have some storage back there for clothes as well. Um, some of the favorite pieces in here, I guess, uh, one of them is this light fixture. Um, this is an Arbutus branch from my friend's farm on Pender Island. It was the fallen Arbutus and so I took a branch, waxed it and turned it into a light fixture and I think all the different types of wood in here I really like. We've got some recycled cork flooring, um, so there's that type of wood and then we've got these like cedar strips that were from a fence board in Chilliwack and so you can see the feature wall as well has uses those uh, cedar panels. Keeping it simple with the white drywall walls, which I do not recommend because they crack. I have two um, heaters, space heaters, one here and one up in the loft. They each heat about 150 square feet or so. So it does the trick for the most part. When it's really cold here, I have an additional space heater, which I keep on in the daytime. But at night in the loft, it gets pretty warm up there. So, so far so good. Um, electricity, I have a plug in to uh, we have like power and water hookups, um, so we get water from a well on the farm, and then we also get power. Um, he's supplied power to all the homes on the on the property. The water has been the hardest part because um, it's very high in iron, as I was saying. So it's got lots of like sediment in it, so it comes out a little bit red in the sink. So it took a while to get that filtration process set up. Both at the farm scale and also at the house scale. I didn't build this myself, but um, I had a lot of say into the design and the building materials um, and some principles that I wanted to make sure uh, were incorporated in here. 
Um, so I, for instance, some of the cedar siding that's on the side of the house, uh, I had taken off from um, a house that was going to be demolished in North Van. So I got my friends, we tore off the cedar siding with permission from the homeowner, and then we flipped it around and put it back on, on this house. So. Um, things like that and, and like the court flooring I got myself. The actual trailer I bought off of a urban farmer um, in Richmond. There's a lot of benefits to living this lifestyle. Firstly, I own my own house, which is unheard of, uh, I think, for a, and I'm not in any debt. Um, that's unheard of in this region especially. So I think that uh, gives me kind of a sense of security, in, especially in the type of work that I do because I um, I'm a contractor for various nonprofits, and so that doesn't necessarily guarantee a stable or high paying income. Um, so to have kind of a, my own place to come home to where I know I'm, I'm like have a say over whether or not I'm living in it, <laughs> you know, I'm not rent evicted or whatever, it's, yeah, it just provides that sense of security. It's wonderful living like amongst community as well. I think that's been the the best part of this specific situation is having multiple neighbors who are all like around my age, all like caring about the same type of thing and working together to build a community has been really great. I think like it aligns with a lot of my environmental um, philosophies and goals to live a little bit lighter on the land. Uh, I, philosophically, I have trouble kind of owning land. Um, considering we're on unceded territories and I don't know, just perpetuating that um, colonialism. I'm, I'm sure this is perpetuating it in a way as well, but uh, being a little bit more mindful as to my relationship with the land, um, both in terms of like, uh, yeah, how I'm living on it. I have to be very careful about, you know, what I put down my sink because I know that it's going just right over there through a gray water filtration system that I made. So it's just, you have to be very conscious about how you live and what you bring into your house, what you take out. We don't have any garbage or recycling on the property, so I have to bring it all out and it just makes me a little bit more aware of what I'm um, consuming and producing on a day to day. On the flip side of that, what are some challenges that you face in this type of lifestyle? I think the biggest challenge um, is both the challenge and a blessing is location because I'm, I work in the Vancouver area and that's my community so, uh, or that was my community anyways and it's hard to I guess adapt to not being able to bike around wherever I want, whenever I want, like go to yoga, just take 15 minutes out of my day and like now it's an hour. Uh, venture for me to like go anywhere and do anything so that's been the hardest part is location it's also been the most amazing part because i'm in the middle of the forest and there's so many other lessons there that's actually been the hardest part is just like coordinating and having a cat and needing to coordinate cat sitters and house sitters <laughs> which is uh yeah, I know. I know, Fig, you're so much work. <laughs> There's been small little challenges, like trying to figure out um, how to stop my hoses from freezing, um, which has not been, you know, insurmountable. I was able to fix it, but it's just, it's always kind of learning along the way as to how to live in this comfortably, um, what exactly you need, and what is a luxury. Well, I never own my own house, so I never accumulated all the stuff that goes along with that. Uh, so I've always lived from room to room, and even in spaces um, where I lived by myself, they were always, they were no bigger than this. It feels really good not to have more than I use or more than I need. I also have a relatively large tiny house, so maybe that helps. Like my closet is a normal size closet. Would you recommend this lifestyle and uh, what type of person would you recommend it to? Anyone who's open and curious to other ways of being. Uh, not that this is very different from our current society. I don't think I'm like extreme by any means. Um, but just taking steps to figure out, yeah, what exactly you need, um, how you're living on the land, uh, just other ways of I, I guess people who were interested in experimenting. What was it for you that got you interested in um, doing something like this in the first place? I had just finished my master's at UBC 
I knew that I wanted to work in nonprofit and I knew that I didn't want to work a nine to five Monday to Friday. So being in the rat race was not an option for me. So I was just trying to explore like what are other ways for me to have a stable home and feel like I have a safe space to return to um, where I'm a part of my community that doesn't require me to be unhappy in my day to day trying to make ends meet so that I can stay in that place. So I was originally looking at a laneway home in Vancouver, but because that wasn't possible, I think I just started looking at documentaries. I watched We the Tiny House People, which really just like, yeah, connected with me because it was like, I want to live a little bit more off grid. Ideally, what I wanted originally was to have um, a, a water collection and uh, filtration system as part of my house so that I could be completely off grid, solar panels, but that whole setup is super expensive so that's kind of a, a next step but yeah i just saw it as a way to have a little bit more say as to how i lived and uh, enabled me to have space to explore other things that i'm interested in rather than just work what would you say to somebody that's maybe watched a couple videos about tiny houses or maybe watched the documentary you watched mm -hmm. and is thinking about doing this themselves what would you say to that person find a space before you build it. <laughs> that was where I went wrong. Um, which was great in a way because it really motivated me to engage and advocate for tiny house legalization because I had a really big thing at stake. Um, but for someone who doesn't want to start a nonprofit, uh, I think that having the space beforehand um, and then you can also kind of design your house around that space. So even though it's mobile, you can say, okay, I know that this is gonna be facing the south, so I wanna have you know, this type of windows, which allows the best light in, um, or you know, I know the, the, the hose is gonna be over there, so I can orient my piping to, to meet that. So it just gives you a little bit more say as to how you wanna design it, um, and a little bit more security. If you had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? I have a, a bit of a spiritual practice where I'm trying to remind myself to relax, um, to um, be curious and be kind, which are like the three principles that Tara Brock talks about. <laughs> I really love her. It's all about like exploring what suits you best and what fulfills you, right? So f for me, finding this space where uh, it would enable me, it would give me time and um, security to explore like a deeper connection to my community, to the land, to myself. That I think was what this was about, what this is about. It's a, it's a continuing journey and process. If anybody wants to follow your journey, is there a place that you'd like to send them? No, I don't have my own blog anymore, uh, but I would say go to the BC Tiny House Collective uh, it's not my personal journey, but it's a network of people who are working towards advocating for the legalization of tiny homes. Um, and I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And so if you're interested in being a leader in um, normalizing and legalizing this type of lifestyle and housing stock, then I'd be keen to connect. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe and ring that bell button. The soundtrack to this video was actually made by Alex O'Connor and you can check him out on YouTube at Sound of Alex and the link to that is in the description below. Right now a playlist is popping up where you can actually continue watching on this channel all the alternative dwellings that I've had the pleasure of going and documenting. As well as I'd highly recommend you guys go check out my van build that I'm doing on my vlog channel and the link to that is in the description as well. So thank you all for watching and stay tuned because every single Monday I upload a video here on this channel of another alternative dwelling at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I'll see you guys then.